because, you know, at a base level, people always cheer for the underdog. You got folks, you know, uh, with, with, with clubs getting shot by commandos. I mean, that, any way you slice it, it uh, is going to be a PR disaster for Israel. And again, I'm no genius about all this stuff, but I could see that. I mean, it seems like a five year old can mentally work through all this. Absolutely. You're, you're, it's, it's, <laughs> it's stupefying. I mean, what do you, how do you even explain it when you have the, you know, the, the Israeli government responding and saying, okay, they came down with, with, with commandos onto the on board ships in the middle of the night from a helicopter, and then they're saying that the people defending themselves are attacking the soldiers? I mean, even the explanation is stupid. Stay there, Victor. This is Key Info coming up. Yes, naval commander, the head of their naval weapons program, and then, of course, recruited to be a case officer uh, for the Israeli Mossad. And he's authored two nonfiction books about his service in the Mossad. We're going to tell you about his website, thebookpatch.com, coming up, or ostrovskyfineart.com. Uh, this is a short segment. Uh, you were finishing up with the plight of what's happening in Gaza. Uh, and, and, and then I want you to elaborate on the mindset of the Likudniks uh, who say, hey, we got 400 nukes and, you know, we're just ready to go wild. I mean, basically... Uh, I mean, chutzpah is the word. And then expanding on that, uh, what you see happening with Turkey, they're saying they're going to send naval ships in. Uh, they're saying that you know more ships from Ireland and Malta uh, and, and other places are coming. And, and, and what do you expect Israel to do? Well, according to uh, the, the prime minister, he's already uh, starting to show that he's you know under U.S. pressure. Netanyahu, he just may you know, ease the Gaza siege. I mean, there's no question about that. And easing it in a way that he would kind of like uh, backtrack but not lose face in, to his own party, which is an extreme right-wing party in Israel, which has people like uh, Lieberman and others who are extremely right-wing. I mean, these are people who are calling for any citizen in Israel to make an oath of allegiance to Israel as a Jewish state. Now, that would be a problem for a lot of Palestinians, who are not Jewish, and if and he wants them to lose their citizenship should they not be willing to make that oath. Um, so that's the kind of people we're dealing with. So Netanyahu is caught between you know the rock and the hard place. Even if he wants to compromise, he has to do it in a way that he shows that he's not losing face. Uh, the he will try and and give some um, leniency towards materials coming in, and that would alleviate the situation in the Gaza Strip without a question. Turkey may, may, I don't think they will, but they may send, uh, you know, an escort, a military escort with those ships. Then the question is, do you actually confront them? Um, do you put Israeli ships to confront Turkish ships? Um, that, I don't think, is something Israel would want to do. Now, the Turkish ships would not cross into Israeli uh, the waters. They would probably stop in the you know, in the international water on the line, if that were to happen. Uh, now, we're, we're dealing with countries here that are easy to get, you know, to, to heat up. Uh, you know, Turkey, uh, with all due respect, is not exactly uh, your, you know, your angel in the area. I mean, they're dealing with the Kurds in a way that, you know, nobody wants to. They, they're preventing them from their own languages, and there's a lot of things they have. They're not willing yeah, to Turkey's work. got a military iron fist and basically a front government, and that's on record, uh, and that's going to destabilize Turkey if they are put into a confrontation with Israel. Absolutely, and it's an internal problem that they have to solve, too. And Radwan, who is, you know, uh, trying to show a face to the Muslim world in what he's doing, uh, is, is basically this whole situation has forced everybody in the whole arena to turn towards their extreme side and say, we're not on Israel's side. That's what they have achieved in this. So this is what Israel has achieved in their attack on the ship. Egypt, which was an ally to Israel for at least three years in this blockade, had had to back off and open the border, you know, between Gaza and Israel. Already 500 uh, Palestinians had been allowed into Egypt, and they're allowing a lot more, something they had not done for the last three years under extreme pressure, you know, from all the Arab world. Uh, and they have allowed it now. So it, it basically it's kind of like, talk about shoot yourself in the foot. Um, this is this is exactly what they have done. Had they stopped them out in the water, like you said before, with those 
what's called wet submarines, which is really a torpedo, a large torpedo with two or three or six seats in it that people are, you know, divers are in it with their oxygen tanks and whatever. They could have come close to the rear end of those ships and stopped them without nobody on board even knowing what happened. They could have boarded these ships in a way that would be a lot easier to handle. I mean, again, they basically almost started the riot by, you know, they threw um, uh, tear gas grenades first before they came off the helicopters and then figured that's what's going to happen. And now some of them are saying, well, we came down with paint paintball rifles. Well, okay, even if they had paintball rifles, which I doubt, how does the guy on the ground know that what's aiming at him is a paintball rifle? Well, how do all these people get killed if it's paintball? Well, and here's the funny part. They, they say paintball rifles, but then they say, what well, they shot at us. They say, but they didn't have any, the, the people in the ship did not have any weapons. They said, yeah, but they took some weapons from the Israeli soldiers and then shot at them. Well, how is it that when the Israeli soldier shoots, it's a paintball rifle, and when he's shot back, it's a real gun? Yeah, it's amazing propaganda, but, but uh, just to be clear earlier, we're going to break. We'll get the answer when we come back. Uh, you're saying that it's good the people were defending themselves, or, or that's a normal response. Uh, but, I mean, uh, that's what I got from what you said before the last break. So, so stay there, sir. We'll come back long segment, uh, get your take on that. And, and then we'll overall talk about the state of Israel, period, and uh, where you see the whole world going. Stay with us. And former Israeli naval commander and the Mossad uh, uh, case officer commander, uh, tell us about uh, the bookpatch.com. Well, the book patch is a website that is designed for writers of all kinds. Uh, it's absolutely free. You go there and you can start writing your book. We have writing tools that are not available anywhere uh, that I designed for myself and then made it available on that site. You can write there. You can invite your friends to join you. You can co-author with others. You can communicate. You can write from anywhere that you have an Internet connection. Uh, you can use the site to have other people read your chapters and comment. You can hire or get editors to help you do that. And when you're done and everything is finished, you can press a button and get it, either download it as a PDF to yourself or order a, a real hard copy co you know, book. You can order a single copy, and uh, it, you, know, you can get your first book for like $16, uh, and then it goes down by the time you reach book number 10, uh, you're you're less than about eight or seven dollars a copy. Well, wow, so that's a that's a very affordable uh, books on demand, uh, but but really one stop shop. Absolutely, and it's, it, you don't you don't have to order them. And in fact, if you finish writing it, you can put it in the bookstore, and other people will order it, and then they buy it. You don't have to order books. You don't have to put any expenditure out forward. I mean, I think people who have a talent or have something to say and have to have want to have a book out don't have to go into a big spending spree in order to get one in their hand. I think, you know, it, it should be something that's really easy and, and, and cheap and inexpensive. And, and, and that's what we try to do. And that's why the book patch is, is, you know, we have over, we've launched it about two weeks ago and we have over 400 people writing books as we speak. Amazing. No, it's a, it's a genius idea, and I hope folks uh, check it out. And, and we'll talk about why you launched it from your experience of attempted censorship. Now, now, now finishing up, uh, before we get into some other subjects with you while we have you, uh, uh, what do you expect to happen, though? I mean, you're saying it'd be smart of Netanyahu to back off, and you're saying it looks like he is a little bit, uh, but the same bravada or, or, or arrogance or, I mean, I don't know what you call it, uh, that caused this could lead to more. I mean, I don't want you to look into a crystal ball because none of us have one, but uh, what do you think is most likely to happen? Well, I think that the, the ships are going to continue coming. There's no question about that. Um, and uh, you can understand why. Uh, there, there is a people in suffering, uh, and there is a need to help. So this is just one covers the other. Uh, and there is a force trying to stop them. And people feel that they're justified in doing it, and more and more volunteers will join and, and make that happen. Uh, it, it's kind of like, you know, the, fighting the good fight, so to speak. Uh, what would happen is that Israel will find a way, and I think that's what they're working on now, to allow the ship closer in, to, to surround it in a way that it's not harmful to the people on board, and to show that they're allowing the material to come down, but they don't want the big presentation. Uh, that is the best, smart way to do it. But again, considering the fact that we're dealing with the same people who send commandos in the middle of the night 
to, to drop onto a ship uh, fully armed and then complain that they were being attacked, then, you know... Uh, what do you say? I mean, what, what can you... Well, that's another point. I mean, I mean, there's that archetypal thing of men lowering down in the night uh, that that's when the bad guys come. That's right, and you're scared of that. I mean, wouldn't you be scared? I mean, what, what would you... Now, don't forget, we're talking about people that have been dealing with Israel on the, on, you know, on the sharp side of the, of, of the bayonet. So they, they know what's happened, and Israeli soldiers have, you know, gone into the West Bank, have gone into Gaza... Uh, you know, had had used their weapons. People have died in large numbers. So yeah, now, a lot of the people on that boat uh, have family or cousins or friends that are dead. I would not know. You know, I don't know, but I know a lot of them are volunteers who have heard about. No, that. no, some of them were former Gazans. Yeah. Yes, yes, and some of them are are people that you know have never been back to Israel, and you know their families have been evicted. Uh...